Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Tonight on the kitchen table I'm going to be talking about these bad boys. Um, the DJI Smart Battery for the uh, Phantom 2 range. Uh, so for those of you who haven't yet got your Phantom but you're thinking maybe of getting one, uh, just a little bit about what makes these smart in DJI's um, view and uh, what makes them different. Uh, for those of you who already got one, maybe just a couple of things on safety and storing them and you know how we can maybe make them last as long as we possibly can, bearing in mind the, they represent, they do represent a bit of an investment. But before we go any further, as is traditional on the channel, the beverage of choice this evening, we're back to, back to Spain, I'm afraid. Uh, well, I'm not afraid because it's really nice. So this is the, uh, the Gran Vega Privado. It's a Garnacha from 2012 and is very fruity indeed. So, uh, uh, cheers. Mm -hmm. So yes, here we are on the kitchen table talking batteries. Um, so this is a lithium polymer battery. Now, those of you who've watched the channel for a while will realise I'm no scientist as far as I'm concerned. That could mean that this is full of tiny little lithiums swimming around in a sea of polymers. I don't know, there's probably a Wikipedia page in there if you want to know about the chemistry of it. What I do know is that um, they have a very good power to weight ratio and they deliver that power for a substantial chunk of the kind of percentage that's in there. And though all those things make them really suited to kind of aerial model aircraft and stuff and they've been, become pretty ubiquitous now. You won't, probably won't find them model airplanes, certainly they are an aircraft that doesn't use LiPos for those benefits. Um, Traditionally, they used to look like this, um, and they required two wires because they're made up of multiple cells. If one of those cells is reading a lower voltage than the others, it's that lower voltage, the lowest voltage one, that will that will trigger things like you know low warnings and, and so on and so forth. You don't want to get to a stage where they're completely out of kilter, so it has this extra thing called a balance plug. And when you stick it into a special charger, you put this into it as well, and then this makes sure that each cell individually. Is, uh, is balanced across, across all of them. So what makes this smart from DJI's point of view is that they've done away with the necessity to have a separate charger, a specialist charger with a balancing port and remembering to plug it in and you know what button do you press for a balanced charge and so on and so forth because basically they've built that all into the battery. In there is a chip which handles all of that stuff, which means that the charger that comes with the uh, with the aircraft when you get it is basically just a power brick. It just shoves voltage in there, and the circuit inside handles all the balancing, which is brilliant. Um, it's also fairly smarter than the average one, I guess, in that it's got this little fuel gauge on the top, which can very handy if you've got more than one. Because if you're in your flight case, which one's the fully charged one? You hit that. Oh yeah, it's that one. Um, and also, you can see these relatively easily from the air. Not that far away, but if you've got it flying close to you, then that could be a, just a, a double check. That's another thing that makes them smart. The <clears throat> third thing that makes them smart, I think DJI are happy that you know it's a smart thing and other people might not be. Um, I don't know if you can see here, this is where the main power, there's two spade type connectors in the Phantom which lock onto those when you slide it in, but there's two little, you see those little circular gold contact patches there. Those don't transfer power, they transfer data. So this smart circuitry is able to tell the aircraft and then via that down to you if you're using a Vision or a Vision Plus on your app or maybe you're using an on-screen display on another aircraft through that. It tells you things like uh, battery temperature. So if it's overheating it can say, you know, let's bring this thing down and cool it. Um, it can show the state of all the cells. If you plug this into your computer, you can have a look at how balanced those cells are and if they're well out of balance, that's something to maybe, you know, we need to have a look at that and investigate that further. Um, and it can also store data on how many charges it's had, what its life cycle is, uh, what percentage of its full charge it can store. So it gives you a good tracking when you plug into the assistant. Uh, how, how healthy and how, how much life left you've got in your battery before it, it kind of isn't going to work anymore for you. That's all cool, that's very smart, I like that. Um, the other thing this data can do though is send a code. Each of these chips has a, um, has a little circuit that generates a, a secret squirrel type code which gets sent to the aircraft and if that code isn't kosher then the aircraft won't let you take off and it comes up with an error that says invalid or not a valid smart battery. 
Um, you can get that error if you've got dirt on these contacts or anything that's got jammed in there and, and you know cuts off the, the signal. If you get a piece of paper, um, that's what happens. I did that to test it when I first got it. What's causing, you know, what could cause that? And just, just basically not having those contacts. Uh, now because of that, there have been some attempts to produce a, um, should we call it a compatible battery? No, let's not be kind. To knock off, to clone and hack these. The first one was a couple of, a few months ago, and it, it was an orange, it had, this part was orange, um, and it was very cheap, uh, l probably half price of these, um, uh, but uh, people's aircraft fell out the sky when they tried it. They were badly made, there was problems with the cells, they just, the, the aircraft just went, oh no, I'm suddenly out of power completely, and plummeted to the ground. Of course, if you had an orange one of these stuck in there, you ain't covered by DJI's warranty, because it was an, not a genuine battery. The other thing I've seen recently is one that's uh, it looks more grey, <laughs> um, and uh, it's about uh, three quarters of the price, uh, and is meant to be sort of guaranteed and everything else. But do you know what? If it was me, and it, as it has been me, I would just rather save up for another couple of months and and get a genuine one for the sake of saving forty quid. I know it's a lot of money and times are hard, but you know. This is the only thing that's providing juice into those motors, and therefore the you know keeping it up. So it's 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 probably a a false economy, I think, at the moment. But that's just me. Go and do your research. Um, see what they're about. Uh, so that's what makes it smart, and that's one of the downsides. That because it's smart, it's proprietary. You can't just buy one of these, and for thirty quid, you have to buy one of these for a hundred and five. So you might want to take that into account. Um, you get good flight times, but even so. Um, they're very convenient uh, when it comes time to swapping the battery out. You land, you, you pull the tabs, it slides out the back of the aircraft, you get you another fully charged one, you pop it in, bang, you're off pretty much. It's not massively quicker than one of these, but there's Velcro to hook around and you've got plugs here to connect and you've got to make sure that this isn't fouling anything. So, so it is slightly more uh, involved. So this is sort of more like a cartridge system. So it's pretty good. Um, safety. LiPo batteries are, well, have a look on YouTube. Uh, some people on YouTube, there's quite a few uh, adverts of LiPos uh, going up in flames. Um, most of them have been people deliberately puncturing them. Don't puncture these. Have a look at those videos. You'll see people taking ones like this that are end of life outside and sort of dropping knives into them and stuff. And there's a bit of a chemical reaction that happens. Uh, also known as fire. Uh, yeah, jets of flames and stuff. So just be careful with these. They've got this little plastic sort of cage, which is cool. It's very good. But these bits are still open. Please don't sort of store them next to anything sharp, like if you've got them in a box with, I don't know, exacto knife or, you know, sharp screwdrivers or something. Keep them away. Just don't puncture them. Um, the other thing is, please don't leave lipos of any manufacturer on charge without sort of you be keeping a reasonable eye on them. That way, if you do see anything issues like them puffing or starting to smoke, you can get them out of the house damn quick. Um, there have been documented cases, quite a few of them. Not with the smart battery, I hasten to add. I don't want to scaremonger about this, but with other um, standard lipos where people have left them on charge, gone out for the afternoon, come back to a completely fire-gutted house. Okay? Um, please don't go upstairs to bed and leave these charging downstairs or anything like that. It's just, just safety first. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they'd be fine, but... Um, if uh, while you're charging it they should stay completely cool if they start to feel warm when they're charging they're not right there's something wrong with them I would stop using them and go and put them somewhere safe personally uh, other thing about storage um, lipo batteries don't like being left for long periods of time fully charged or neither do they like particularly being left on low charge either there is a sweet spot in the middle it's somewhere around between 40 and 55 percent of charge which is why when you buy your smart battery or even one of these, you'll find they're roughly 50% charged. And in that state, they can last for months and months and months and months with no deterioration in their ability to hold a charge. Um, what I tend to do is if I've got these, these are all fully charged, ready to go. If the weather, as it looks now, it's going to be, it's going to be appalling tomorrow, then um, I will leave it for a couple of days um, and then I will go and fly just to hover it in the garden or whatever and get them down to half 
if I'm going to not fly for more than, say, five days. That's me. I've heard some people say no more than 24 hours, and I've heard some people say, oh, I'll leave it a couple of weeks. But, you know, uh, my, for what it's worth, five days for me, I, I, I keep them on that. And that's just to maximise things. The other thing to do is please don't keep them inside your aircraft. Um, a couple of reasons for that. One, obviously it could accidentally get knocked on. It's very unlikely with the double press system, but you know, it could, there could be some sparking, you never know. But the second reason is that those data pins, if you keep it in, are going to be in a compressed state. And the longer they're compressed, the more likely they are to not want to uncompress very well. And you might start getting errors because those pins, if they're com constantly compressed, won't then reach the pads. Um, people have said to me, yeah, yeah, but you know, when I bought mine from DJI, the battery was stuffed in the back of the aircraft. And I said, yes, but if you look carefully, it was put in only that far. Uh, so that the, there was no, no, no contact with the, sp with the spades and no contact with the, the pins. So that would just be another top tip. Um, um, other than that, that's about it. So, yeah, pros, good power to weight, easy, you know, plug and play, got the battery, but we like that. Cons, expensive, proprietary, so you're kind of tied in. Um, yeah, those are the, those are how they roll. Treat them carefully, you know, not, not, you don't have to baby them, but just, you know, be a little bit careful. Don't leave them charging unattended. And if you do leave them in storage or you're going to go away for a while, pop them in a, pop them in a tin, you know, metal tin or something and stick it in your garage or garage or, you know, somewhere where it's going to be out of the way. Uh, other than that, they work pretty well when they work and they are warranted uh, people who have had in the manufacturing process they're mass produced obviously like anything you will get it's inevitable there will be some that have had have got bad cells just because you will get an error rate dji through their dealers have been pretty good at um from from what i understand are pretty good at swapping out any that have come out of the factory that are no good uh, there have even been some people who've had um you know crashes because the battery has just had a malfunction again DJI um, have, in you know, almost all the cases that I've read about, replaced the whole aircraft under warranty. Um, so yeah, if you do have a, a problem with them, then that's another pretty another thing they they do they do seem to follow up on their warranties. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything. I'm conscious of the time. Um, God, another 12 minute video. Goodness me. Um, if there's anything else that I've forgotten, please can you pop it down in the uh, comments. If there's lots I've forgotten, I might well do a follow up video. Uh, but if you've got any other questions or concerns or issues, then by all means, fire, fire questions away and I'll do my best to, to answer them. As ever, many thanks indeed for watching. Thanks for your time. And um, I'll see you again here soon back on the kitchen table. Cheers.